another thing to keep in mind here, if we put A5 up, we're talking about $80 million that have been spent just in this runoff. That's a, an, a truly yeah. remarkable number. $79 million into airtime um, in the runoff. Just unbelievable number. And people in Georgia right now are also debating what to do with their elections going forward because the runoff tacks on weeks to an exhausting election season and makes them spend, I think it's like $75 million in election costs for a runoff. Really? Yeah, state election costs. Oh, because of all the... Because you got to send the envelopes back out. It's a you gotta, lot. You got the employees to count them again, and right. So that's yeah. another thing to to look for into the future. Um, and and I think we should go ahead and just for a taste of what that airtime has looked like, where that seventy nine million dollars, seventy nine million dollars in just a few weeks has gone. Uh, let's roll a couple of their ads. A couple ads from we'll, we'll roll an ad from Warnock and then from Walker, um, or maybe it's the other way around, and just get a taste uh, of what people in Georgia have been seeing. Let's roll. A6. Character is what you do when nobody's watching. Mm-hmm. And Warnock thought no one was watching when his ex-wife called police to report his abuse. And he's a great actor. And Warnock thought no one was watching when he evicted poor people from their homes. He really evicted for $119, $119. Treat me like Character is what you do. When nobody's watching, you find out who Reverend Warnock really is. I'm Herschel Walker and I approve this message. New details tonight about accusations that continue to follow Senate candidate Herschel Walker. Walker's ex-wife, Cindy Grossman, got a protective order against him. Her sister submitted an affidavit saying he stated unequivocally that he was going to shoot my sister, Cindy. Put the gun to my temple. He had the gun right to your head? What did he say? I'm going to blow your effing brains out. Over the years, two other women have accused the Senate candidate of threats. A woman telling police she was very frightened of Walker, making threats to her and having her house watched. In another incident, a police report shows a woman who was involved in a relationship with Walker said he told her that he was going to blow her head off. At one point, with a loaded pistol in his car, he admits he set out to kill a man over a trivial business dispute. Oh, yeah, I did want to kill her. Yeah, I did. He says he doesn't remember a lot of details of these. He may not, but I certainly do. Capping it off with Walker being like, yeah, I wanted to kill him. Yeah. I feel like the, the first ad, the, the, which is the hit on Warnock, is so deeply undermined by the last three seconds, which is, I'm Herschel Walker. And I, and I approve this message. Because then you're like, oh, okay, well, if it's a question of character, you could, you could be like, hmm. Let me find out more about what happened with Warnock and his ex-wife. Let me see who I agree with or disagree with in, in this in this dispute. And then you're like, oh, but if it's a question of character between Walker and Warnock, you're, that that's not terrain that Republicans want to be fighting on. They want to say, forget character. What matters is how you're going to vote in the Senate and what your kind of political values are. Mm -hmm. Because if it's going to be on character, there aren't many people that would lose to Herschel Walker in Georgia. Well, I think it's fundamentally something that can also neutralize, though, the character question. I think that's probably part of the strategy here. And, and Herschel Walker is loved in Georgia by many, many people uh, just for his yeah. athletic he's career. A, he's an icon. He, for, yeah. Right. Yeah, exactly. And so, I, I mean, I think a lot of people do admire champion athletes. Now, whether that means they want to put them in the Senate, um, if they seem to have other character issues that come out over the course of the campaign, I don't know. But it is one of those things that could potentially depress independent turnout for Warnock to say, hey, look, he's saying that he's going to be the, the man of integrity and character that gets into the office, and you have to block Herschel Walker from getting into the office. But if you think, hey, maybe these two guys are, are both kind of you know lame, maybe they're both losers, then maybe you stay home. And, and what's another interesting thing is just in this $80 million runoff has been nasty. Uh, basically what you noticed in both of those ads, um, and, and this had come out before just the runoff, but allegations of domestic abuse. Um, Warnock's ex-wife alleges that he ran over her foot with a car. Um, they're in a nasty custody battle, so he has problems with that as well. And there are many, many allegations of abuse against Herschel Walker. He said that he's had, had mental illness. He's actually copped to a lot of bad stuff that he's done in his past, which has been an interesting strategy. Um, but it, it's just really been a nasty one. And, and the Warnock one was an issue in the 2020 election. Uh, police, the police report came out. Basically, there, there were he and his ex-wife 
were having a fight near the car. Right. You know, he backed the car up. She claims that the car ran over uh, her toe. The police said that they saw no evidence of any injuries and so didn't do, and so didn't do anything at the time. And I think that has that kind of helped Warnock put it behind him. And, you know, no, nobody wants to say, well, uh, I almost drove, ran over my wife. Like you're, like yeah. once you're, you know, once you're in that, it's not good. But like I said, compared to, uh, he put a gun to my temple and said he was going to pull the trigger, uh, and then him saying, "Yeah, I wanted to kill that guy," or and and multiple other women also saying that he had made these like s severe traumatizing threats. Although the last thing I'll say, maybe we can pop um, a eight up on the screen. This is Herschel Walker quote from Herschel oh Walker. Oh my God, so good. Um, he, he says he hasn't seen any lack of enthusiasm from voters. This is a quote from Politico. Uh, Walker said, they're not less motivated because they know right now that the House will be even so that they don't, so they don't want to understand what is happening right now. You get the House, you get the committees, you get all the committees even. They just stall things within there. So if we keep a check on Joe Biden, we just gonna keep a check on him, Walker said. Now it sounds there like he thinks he's running for the House uh, or he's mixing up the words House and Senate. I don't know. But the point I was going to raise is there's a difference, I think, of in Warnock's contrast and Walker's contrast in that Herschel Walker <laughs> isn't running as, uh, you know, an erudite uh, statesman, um, whereas Warnock is running as a sort of, I mean, he's running on his religious credentials. He is he's running. Reverend at Martin Luther King's church. I mean, it's. Right, yeah. and so with Herschel Walker, it's like, yeah, it's, but it's all kind of baked into the cake. I mean, what are you going to say? He's he's a football player, um, and he is, you know, ha has had a checkered pass. Well, he'll tell you the same things. <laughs> right, and so this, so Friday, if, to pick up the thread we talked about there, he, audio emerges of him saying, "I, I live in te I live in Texas." <laughs> uh, he, he took a he took a homestead exemption. In Texas, he talked. He talked about uh, making the decision to run for Georgia, for for uh, the race. I was going to say Georgia Senate, but we're not. It's not obvious. He knows he's running for Georgia Senate <laughs> to run in the campaign from his Texas home. And now you add to it that maybe he's misspeaking here. But the funny thing is, you're not sure. Like, you have to sit with the possibility that he thinks he's running for the House. Yeah. Like you can't. You can't immediately rule it out. <laughs> and everybody watching that knows you can't immediately rule that out. And that's amazing. He might have been misspeaking. Maybe he thinks they're both called houses and he's going to the upper house and there's the lower house, something. But you're like, I'm not, I, I would not bet my life <laughs> that he doesn't think he's running for the house. Also, it's his point is also wrong, even on its own terms. Republicans already control the house. So one more seat in the House wouldn't actually yeah. help them. And Democrats have a majority in the Senate no matter what happens. That's in, what in was this race. confusing to me. <laughs> it's that it, there wasn't a, even, you could take it most in the most charitable possible way and it's still the logic didn't check out with reality. Yeah. <laughs> but it didn't match up to reality. Uh, but, you know, with Herschel Walker, it's, it reminds me a lot, we were talking about this last week, of the runoff between Roy Moore and Doug Jones. And, and Roy Moore is a pretty different ball game, but in the respect that um, there are Republicans who are single life or single issue voters on pro-life issues. Um, there are Republicans who are single issue voters right now on basically wokeness issues, if, the, if that's what we're going to call it. Uh, and, and what I would say is just Basically, these people um, are mostly warm bodies anyway. <laughs> I think the public is like increasingly aware of that. Um, you know, someone is is just a robot who's going to vote uh, either the way the the sort of uh, anti McConnell people want them to vote, or the anti Schumer people, or the anti Pelosi people want them to vote, um, or they're going to vote down the line with McConnell, with right. Schumer, with Pelosi, with McCarthy. Um, and as, as long as you can determine which side of that they're on, you probably know what's going to happen and you just need them to pull the lever. <laughs> and la last point on this, these early voting numbers that you can fiddle around with, uh, it, it looks like Warnock is up probably 15 points like in, in the early vote to start. But if you look at youth vote, here's what's interesting. Youth vote, uh, 18 to 29, made up uh, almost 11% mm -hmm. of the electorate on election day, which which is a, a huge amount. Like what, that's well above what young what, what young people used to do, say 2014 and before. Uh, so far in the early vote, they're only 7.9%. Mm. And so there are two possibilities here. One, one, which is what I think, which is that young people procrastinate, and they also are they 
they're more likely to vote on election day if you only have a couple of weeks right. to vote. Uh, or they're, they're going to go back to their 2014 kind of turnout levels and, and, young, and youth turnout will be way down. I don't think that's right. Uh, but if it's right, then Walker could be closer, closer. and, and right. maybe only lose by a couple of points. If youth turnout on election day, you know, surges and hits, uh, you know, hits what it was during the general election, 10.9 percent, you could see a significant Warnock win, which, mm-hmm. which would be kind of startling because, you know, he only won by 30,000 votes in the general election. Right. So, so how he, so fi- finding a way to go from 30,000 to winning by several hundred thousand is, is difficult uh, in the same state a month apart, but uh, Walker may have figured it out. You know, it's interesting to kind of hypothesize about what this race would have looked like had it been the determinative factor in control of the mm-hmm. Senate. Um, and, and again, it's not, and there's still $80 million that poured into right. it because obviously that vote is extremely important either way. But, uh, you know, when when Republicans sort of realized what wasn't at stake in Georgia, it does seem like, and I saw a quote in Politico from a, a GOP guy down in Georgia saying, it's like everybody's just kind of hoping for the best right now, but you know, right. that's all you can do. <laughs> and it's so crazy to think that uh, Mandela Barnes in Wisconsin only got a couple million bucks from mm-hmm. the party mm-hmm. uh, and lost by like 20,000 votes. Mm-hmm. And that's also a Senate seat. But yeah. again, that's we're looking at these numbers right now. Um, and I think you know, we don't have a poll that shows, a recent poll that shows Walker winning. Right. We have the early vote numbers that favor Democrats by a really sizable margin. Um, and, and, you know, the polling in the last, what, five plus years just really hasn't been great. So you never know. It's we'll raining see. in Georgia. Who knows how, who that favors? Polls close at seven, but uh, certainly here, I think we're expecting a, a Warnock win. Yeah, and results should be in by nine, 10 o'clock. We'll see. We'll be watching. Hey guys, ready or not, 2024 is fully upon us now. And Sagar and I have been brainstorming ways that we can really up our game for this critical election. Yeah, we rely on our premium subs to expand our coverage, to add staff, to upgrade the studio. We just wanna give you the best independent coverage of this election, which is possible. So if you can help us out, become a premium subscriber today, breakingpoints.com, or the link is down here in the description video. It really means the world to us. And if you like what we're all about, this is the best possible way to keep us 100% independent, Working only for you.